the chief of design from Jaguar, his name's Ian Callum. Behind us is the CX-75. What does CX-75 stand for? Well, C's concept, X is something we always use in Jaguar. 75 is to celebrate 75 years of the Jaguar name. Well, I can tell you, this car, to me, there, there's so much to say. I'm just going to hand the mic to him and let him give you a walk around. Here you go, Ian. Thank you. Well, this is CX-75. Um, first of all, to understand with any Jaguar, it's about proportions. And to that end, what we'll be able to do with this car is shape the car exactly as we want it. Because this is a hybrid, and because all the components are separated, it means we can design the car the way we want it to look, rather than wrap the car around various components. So it gives our, makes our job a lot easier. If we walk around the car, the first thing I want you to notice is the side glass. One of the most important things in any Jaguar is this shape here. This beautiful daylight opening, or DLO, to put it in designer speak. And then that's then offset by this very, very strong fuselage on the low, lower part of the car. And it's very important that that proportion of the fuselage to the cabin is at the right measure. Now from this wonderful fuselage emanates these wheel arches that wrap around the wheels. And again, it's very important that the wheel arches and the skin of the wheels wrap around the tyres as tight as possible. And then you notice a similar thing as it comes through the back. But it's a little bit longer and that proportion of one third to two thirds again is right for the stance of the car. Come along the side of the car, this lovely in air intake, bringing sucking all the air to feed these turbines in the back. We'll get to those in a minute. And as we come around the back, this rear arch hugging the rear wheel, 22 inch rear wheel incidentally, and sweeping around the back of the car. And this is actually a little bit of influence from the XJ13. Those of you might remember the XJ30 is a lovely sports car that was designed in the 60s, had a lovely tail in it that swept back, designed for aerodynamics. And that's what we've done again here. We pulled this and stretched it out as far as we could to give this sense of speed and power and wrapping right underneath the back of the car to create this Venturi. Mechanical Venturi offset by a lot of gorgeous sculpture. Now, as you come back in, we mentioned these turbines. I say it's an extended range electric vehicle, this. And as you look in the back of the car, we see these gorgeous turbines, which are there simply to charge the batteries. So altogether, this really is about advanced technology complemented by beautiful Jaguar style, great proportions, beautiful lines, and very, very pure surfacing. Hi, my name's Phil Elliott from the company Blade and & Jets, and here we've got a micro gas turbine engine which is very similar to the one fitted to the Jaguar CX-75 car. The key features of this engine are the first part, which is the axial flow compression, where the air is compressed, the second section is the combustion chamber where the fuel and air is mixed to produce thrust, the air is expanded. And the third section here is where the thrust actually spins the engine and you get the exhaust from the rear here. The difference between this and the one fitted in the Jaguar is primarily this is a thrust motor and what we've got in the CX-75 is a configuration with an electrical generator which is at the back here. The electrical generator produces electricity which recharges the car batteries. Of course, another important thing about Jaguar design, the interiors of the car, they have to be very, very special. And they're about materials, and they're about bringing wonderful form using materials into the car. And there's some wonderful details as well. For instance, you'll see the sculpted metal running through the car, and this actually is part of the chambers for the air, feeding the air into the, the turbines themselves. And then when you look at the doors, we have this very, very fine mesh running through the surface of the doors. Set behind it are these miniature speakers, very unique. And when the sound comes on, the speakers light up. So it really is about light and sound working together. And it gives you the most 
amazing and unique sense of space inside the car. Okay, so we're inside the car. Um, you notice the seats are actually built into the shape of the car. It's very, very snug. You feel as if you're part of a cockpit. It almost feels like being on an aircraft. And of course, then the controls just move backwards and forwards as you might need them, like so. We have virtual dials in front of us, which gives an enormous amount of information. And then, just offset against that, in complete contrast, we have this mechanical Raymond clock. And uh, I think that the, the detailing of that really is a complete adjunct position of design compared with the rest of it. Very beautiful. This is a lever for forwards or reverse. That's it. Nothing more than that. The pedals also come towards you as you move the, the controls. And then the materials are all about just pure simple leather, including some beautiful detailing in here where the leather changes texture into something much more mechanical in the texture itself. And if you want to open the door, the door switch is here on the seat. And you pull it open and the door opens.